A lot of people promote things that they have never sent someone to for free, that they never would send someone to for free. They're only doing it for the money. So this is one that you should kind of do some soul searching and really think, would I promote this product for free? And go even a step deeper. Have you promoted that product for free before? Now, if you can say yes, then I think you're in pretty good shape. Welcome to the Online Genius Podcast, where host and renegade thinking beer brewing lawyer turned online entrepreneur Bobby Klink proves that building and protecting your online genius doesn't have to be rocket science. Bobby and his expert guests break down online marketing and the legal stuff so you can stop sweating the small stuff and get back to building your amazing business. Now, here's your host, Bobby Klink. Hey there, welcome to episode 94 of the Online Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Klink. And today's episode, I'm excited about because it is a user or or kind of a, a follower's idea, an email I got from someone who listens to the podcast and who is on my email list. And he responded to a prior podcast and his email gave me an idea for this. It's a guy named Scott. And back in episode 84, I talked about how launching is getting more expensive and more challenging. It was kind of how I was talking about why the non-launch launch method that I'm using now of list building and then launching to my warm list seems to be working better. And I was talking about how a lot of people that I know in the industry are finding it challenging to launch because it's expensive, et cetera. And Scott wrote me back to say that he thought part of the problem was coming from affiliate marketing. As he said, and he said, damage is being done, in my view, when I receive five to six emails in a day from various thought leader experts cross-promoting the same launch of a colleague and comment. But it wasn't just that he was saying that there was a problem because a lot of people were promoting the same person. But then he points out that then the next thought leader does their own launch and the reciprocal process occurs. It's overdone. In other words, what he was saying is it just seemed like this constant stream of people promoting things as affiliates. And then like every single month, it seems like they're telling you something else is the best thing since sliced bread. And that kind of was rubbing him the wrong way. And so that email from Scott inspired me to do a podcast episode about affiliate marketing done right. In other words, how can you do affiliate marketing either, you know, if you're serving as the affiliate or if you want to recruit affiliates and do it the right way so that it doesn't seem that way? Because let's be honest, affiliate marketing can be a great path to success in many episodes, I've talked about this, how candidly, if you look at the big launches from big name people, their success is coming from two things. Number one, their warm audience that they've been cultivating through time, and then they borrow warm audiences from their affiliates. And so affiliate marketing is part and parcel of a lot of the big launches that we see happening in the online entrepreneurship space. And so, you know, it can be a powerful tool, but as Scott pointed out, When it's done wrong, it rubs people the wrong way and it can turn people off. So I wanted to do an episode all about how to do this right. And this is an episode that makes sense for me because as I'm recording this, I am in the middle of basically my only affiliate marketing launch. I'm an affiliate for Amy Porterfield's Digital Course Academy. It's the only like launch product that as of right now, I'm an affiliate for. I've had people ask me to be affiliates for other things. I've said no politely. Literally, I got an email today from someone asking me to be an affiliate, and and I'm gonna like I'm, I'm gonna send a polite response and say no, thank you. That's not a good fit for me. But because I am doing an affiliate launch, literally as I'm recording this for Digital Course Academy, I thought, hey, I'm gonna record an episode that's all about my views on how to do affiliate marketing right. But before I dive in, I want to invite you to join me. If you are potentially thinking about creating an online course, I have a group that I've set up for this DCA, Digital Course Academy Affiliate Launch. Again, even if you're not going to sign up, 
And I'd love for you to join me in this free group. It's a group where we're talking about and kind of exploring creating a digital course business. I've also got some great free trainings in there. I've got a, a list building boot camp and a content marketing or a content strategy boot camp in there. So kind of help you set the foundations for your business, even if you're not yet ready to create a digital course. I'd love for you to join me in there. You can get that training for free and get all the great info. You can join the group by heading to youronlinegenius.com forward slash exploring DCA. Now, if you're potentially interested in creating a digital course, you're going to hear more about kind of the, the DCA product, Digital Course Academy by Amy Porterfield, my bonuses and all those things. But if nothing else, you can kind of see how I'm doing an affiliate launch. So it's a way for you to really get a feel for what I think is a productive way to handle an affiliate marketing campaign. So again, I'd love for you to join me. It's the group again is absolutely free. You can join by going to youronlinegenius.com forward slash exploring DCA. So with that, let's dive in. And I, I think the important thing to start with is this concept that affiliate marketing should be a win, win, win. So it's not win, win. It's, it needs to be a three way win. And what I mean by that is that you should win as the person who's serving as the affiliate, the person whose product you're promoting should win, but your followers should also win. If you can't say that by promoting a product, all of those things are going to be true, you probably shouldn't be serving as an affiliate for that product. Because look, as with everything else that you do, Affiliate, affiliate marketing should be about serving your community. And this is the piece that kind of gets missed and a lot of people don't do right. But let me be absolutely clear. When you do affiliate marketing right, it is in fact a service. It's a service to everyone involved and you shouldn't be ashamed of it. You shouldn't feel bad about it. You shouldn't feel like you know you have to hide it. You should be unabashedly happy to serve as an affiliate for that product. And there's a lot of reasons why it works. Look, all of this, you know, we have a particular area of expertise. We have a particular niche. We can't be all things to all people. So for example, I, you know, I help online entrepreneurs. I started by helping them with the legal stuff, but now I'm helping them with the legal stuff, but then also with finding and kind of cultivating their, their true fan and a raving fan base. So those are great things that I believe every online entrepreneur needs to do. But you know what I don't do? I don't help people, for example, create products. I don't have anything about creating a course, creating digital products, creating a membership or any of that stuff. But the reality is that people who follow me, people who like my offers, who listen to this podcast, who enjoy my emails, who buy my products, they're going to need to create a, a scalable digital product at some point, right? So if there is a way for me to direct them to someone whose product I believe in, who will help them do that, hey, that's a natural fit, right? I'm not doing anything I'm ashamed of. I'm helping to fill in gaps where my product suite doesn't work. And that's why Amy's course, Digital Course Academy, is one of the few that I promote. Because for most online entrepreneurs, creating a course, an online course, is the quickest, easiest way to create a scalable business model. And that's what people are going to need at the end of the day to kind of get out of the, the hamster wheel of constantly being, you know, trying to keep up of trading hours for dollars. I've experienced that myself. And so it's a natural fit, right? But let me give you another example. I have an affiliate link for one other thing. It's Kartra. It's the, the software solution that I use for my membership sites, for my uh, courses, for my sales pages, for my landing pages, for my email, for just about everything. And I love it. I I've been with them for a long time. And so that's a natural fit for me, right? I can't solve people's software problems, but I can say, hey, I love this product and you might want to check it out. You know, other places where people you know, there can be a natural fit. And, and candidly, I'm not an affiliate with Amazon, but I probably should be because I talk about books all the time, but I don't worry about that. That's another place where people can obviously feel like, hey, you know, if you're constantly recommending books to people and giving people ideas for that, you might want to have affiliate links for that. 
But you get the point. If you're actually serving, you know, if if providing this reference to people is a way to serve your community, to provide value, to fill in a gap of something that you don't offer, doing that is in fact a service. Unfortunately, though, a lot of people are doing it wrong. Too many people think of it in terms of win-win. It's about them and the person whose product they're promoting. They forget about their audience. You know, you can see this in a couple of ways. Like I've actually had some people complain to me about about affiliate marketing where people literally start emailing them every single day about an affiliate offer that's not going to be out for a month. And they're like, what are these people doing? And these are people who maybe normally would send a weekly email, but all of a sudden they're sending an email every single day. Now, to me, that's kind of overkill. And to me, that's a good way to burn out your audience and to upset your audience. Another example of people who are really just thinking about win-win is the example of people who promote one thing after another in the exact same space. And each time are basically saying, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Now, again, I'm not saying that you can't promote multiple things and you can't promote them back to back. But for example... You probably shouldn't promote like a product about doing one style of launch, let's say a challenge launch, for example, and say, that's a, this is a great product, it's a great promotion, et cetera. And then the next month, promote something about, let's say, webinars, if those are standalone products, because that kind of is like, wait a minute, you're telling me challenges are great, but you're telling me webinars are great. What are you going to tell me next? I should do live video launches. You get the point. All of a sudden... It's going to look like to people that you really only care about trying to sell things. Again, this is kind of the notion that we should all be taking a stand. We should all have things we believe in and we should promote those things, not everything under the sun. So those are some of the things that people are doing wrong and examples of it. But I think the best way to kind of figure out and make sure that you don't do it the wrong way is to start with some rules or tests that you can apply to figure out whether you should promote something as an affiliate. And I have a bunch of different ways to look at that, to look at this, and we're going to go through them in turn. Now, the first rule, and I honestly believe this, you should only promote something as an affiliate if you would promote it for free. Now, don't get me wrong. When you promote something as an affiliate, and if you create bonuses and do all those things, you're obviously going to promote it more than if you would promote it for free. But I think the notion stands, and I think this is a, a big distinction that everyone should keep in mind. If you would not send people to sign up for that product without an affiliate commission, you should not be an affiliate. In a sense, it's kind of a sign that you're in it for the money, not to serve your people. And I want to be clear here. I'm not talking about these kind of phony statements that pretty much every affiliate makes. I mean, seriously, people, every single affiliate everywhere is going to say, oh, I would only promote things that I actually believe in. Okay. But the reality is that a lot of people promote things that they have never sent someone to for free, that they never would send someone to two for free. They're only doing it for the money. So this is one that you should kind of do some soul searching and really think, would I promote this product for free? And go even a step deeper. Have you promoted that product for free before? Now, if you can say yes, then I think you're in pretty good shape. And again, let me give you the examples and, and kind of walk you through the stories of, of how I became an affiliate for Amy Porterfield's Digital Course Academy and then separately for Kartra. So let me start with DCA. Now, I was not an affiliate the first time she launched it in January of this year. Now, that was partly because I had my own product launch at the same time, et cetera. So I just wasn't going to do it. But I talked it up to a bunch of people in my community because I knew how good Amy's products are. I had access to all of her products. And I just knew that she was a fantastic teacher. So if you wanted to create an online course, her product was going to be the best way to go. I knew that without hesitation. So I talked it up to people in my community, even though I wasn't an affiliate. And just to go even a step further, I literally offered Amy's team that 
And I think there was someone who literally asked, like, can I talk to some, you know, to some of your current students? And I said, hey, if that happens, I'm happy to talk to people about it, you know, and just give them my two cents, give them my perspective. So again, I was offering not just to talk it up to my community, but to actually talk to other people that had questions because I said, why not? And when I look back at that launch, I can count about a dozen people who signed up because of my recommendation. And I did all of that for free. So when you think about that, you can kind of get a sense and say, hmm, that's probably a product I believe in. And then kind of with that one, it goes even further because Amy asked me to be an ambassador to help coach students through DCA the first time. And I did it and I loved it and it was a lot of fun. So I've got that added benefit that, that I basically agreed to help her within the program because I knew it was so good and because I could help people with it. So that's kind of the story there. And if you think about it, that story, of course, makes for great marketing copy, right? Because I can talk about all these things. But the reality is that's not what really matters about it at a base level. What matters is that it demonstrates that me serving as an affiliate this launch isn't just about making money. It's about a product that I believe in. It's about a product that I did recommend, was happy to recommend for free. And so you can kind of see how when, when you use that as a test, it's going to start to look like, hey, that's a product that you definitely see as something that serves your community. Now, Kartra is a similar story. Now, if you don't know Kartra, it's a, an all-in-one software solution that helps you basically do lots of different things within your business, email, video hosting, sales pages, uh, landing pages for opt-ins, membership sites, all of that stuff. It, it's got so much in there. And, and I joined it during the beta launch back in early 2018. And for the first time, I loved a software solution. Now, I had been part of other software solutions that claimed to be all-in-one, and, and they just weren't. And I get into Kartra and I fell in love immediately. It was kind of, finally, I felt like, yes, this is a good solution. And so I started talking it up to people and even offering like people in communities I was in to, to just like help them by like letting them kind of come onto a Zoom call and show them around the back end and let them see what it looked like. And I wasn't doing that as an affiliate. I wasn't doing anything like that. I just said, hey, this is something that I really enjoy. And if, if you like it, I'm happy to help to serve you by helping you to understand how it works and to make the right decision. And sometime along the way, I don't know, it was like the you know fifth person I'd done this for said, hey, do you have an affiliate link? If so, I'll sign up through you. And I was like, oh, well, I don't, but I'll go get one. <laughs> and so that's how I became an affiliate for Kartra. Because literally someone that I was just trying to serve to show them how great I thought this software was said, hey, do you have an affiliate link? If so, I'll sign up through you. So it was kind of like, a, oh, okay, well, I guess I should do that, right? That makes sense. <laughs> and so, you know, that's another similar story. Now, what I want you to take from these stories isn't just, you know, okay, this is Bobby talking about things. The point here is that using this notion that you will only be an affiliate for something that you would promote and maybe even have promoted for free, it means you're going to be really selective. You're not going to be an affiliate for everything under the sun. You're not going to be emailing your list every month with a new promotion and, and, and trying to convince them that, that, no, it's this thing that's the best thing since sliced bread, and then it's the next thing and the next thing. You're not going to be doing that. You're only going to go to your list with something that's really great, something that, that you can give them a recommendation for without hesitation, without having to think twice, and it just makes it so that kind of a check to make sure that you're actually promoting it for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. So that's kind of the first test. This first test is, is it something that you would promote for free? And, and ideally that maybe you have promoted for free. When that's true, that's the kind of thing that being an affiliate for makes sense. Now, the next test I want to talk about has to do with bonuses. Now, some people like, if there's like an evergreen product you know, maybe you don't have bonuses. You're not offering bonuses for things like, you know, I don't offer anything for Kartra. Candidly, I don't even really promote Kartra. If someone asks me, I'll give them my link, but I don't worry about it. Okay. But if you're going to be part of like an affiliate launch for a product, 
you're going to have to create bonuses. That's part of the nature of being an affiliate. The expectation is that you will give people who sign up through you something extra that you create and you deliver to them. And when you do that, looking at those bonuses and thinking through what you can offer and is there a natural fit is another great test to make sure that it makes sense for you to be promoting this product. Now, let me explain what, what I mean by that. If you can either offer one of your existing products or quickly create an on-brand product, meaning a, a product or a kind of a group of things that is falls within what you're already doing, and those will be a good fit as a bonus for whatever product you're pr going to promote as an affiliate, that's a good sign. It's a good sign that you are a good fit to be an affiliate. Because what it means is that your brand and whatever product you're promoting are a natural fit together. It also means most likely that there is a kind of fit between your audiences. In other words, your audience overlaps with the audience who are likely to buy that other product. And when that's the case, it just kind of becomes this natural synergy and it fits together. Now, if your audience is completely different from the audience likely to buy the product, that's going to show up in your bonuses and it's going to be a, a good sign that it's not a good fit. If you have to really think hard or struggle to come up with how you would create a bonus experience for a product that probably means that when you look at it, what you do and what this person, you know, the person whose product you're thinking about promoting do, they just don't fit together. But let me give you an example. Again, I can give you my example as a way to think through something that's just a natural fit. Because when I thought about being an affiliate for Amy Porterfield's Digital Course Academy, I think about it, I'm like, well, this is a no-brainer. I mean, I can immediately come up with things I could put people in my existing products or come up with new products and they immediately fit with it. And let me tell you what I mean by that. So, so Amy's course, Digital Course Academy, it teaches students how to create a course and how to launch it. It touches on list building, but she doesn't spend a bunch of time there because she has a separate course on list building. So it's really about, hey, how do you create this scalable product and launch it? And she uses webinars as, as a way to launch. That's the vehicle she teaches. So in thinking that through, I mean, there were plenty of things I could obviously offer as an affiliate. So for example, I have a course creators legal template pack that has the, the legal template you know, templates of the policies you're going to need to successfully create and launch your online course. And Amy, the last time around, had me on to do a Q&A and actually literally recommended to people that, that they buy my templates. And so you can kind of see that's a natural fit, right? I can offer an existing product that fits perfectly with everybody who's going to join that course. But then let's think about the other side of my business, my Fans First Society, which is all about building a raving fan base so that when you're ready to launch something, people are ready to buy. Again, a perfect fit. So I could give access to the Fans First Society as part of my bonus package for DCA, and it fits perfectly because she's going to teach him how to create the course and launch it. I'm going to teach him how to get the, the fans, really nurture fans, so that when it comes time to launch, they'll be ready to buy. And then I thought about, well, what else could I do? And I said, well, you know, I could basically do something in like as my role as an ambassador within the course. And I decided I could run live implementation workshops basically as a way to help people kind of actually get stuff done. Because that's one of the things I'm good at is, is getting stuff done. And, and I'm using stuff instead of the word I normally use because I don't want the explicit mark on my podcast. But you get the point. Really getting stuff done and kind of going from idea to implementation is one of my strong points. And I helped people do that in my role as an ambassador the last time around. And I will help again. I'm going to be an ambassador again this time. But I said, hey, 
you know, I could run live workshops for people who sign up through me to actually during these, these weeks that she has built in for you to implement stuff where we could get together and I could help people just get it all done and kind of go from idea and what she's teaching to implementation. So again, that's an example of where I, I'm creating something specifically as a bonus, but it's a natural extension of what I'm already doing with what I'm already good at and that people recognize as one of my talents. So that kind of gives you a sense of when I say your bonuses should be a natural fit, hey, that's kind of a natural fit. But let's talk about someone who wouldn't be a good fit to be an affiliate for for Amy's course, because again, since we're talking about it. Now, one of her success stories is a woman who made $60,000 on her first launch of a course about creating caramel apples. This woman literally teaches people how to create caramel apples in her online course, and she got something like 300-something people to sign up at $200 a piece. Now, that is a huge success story. And obviously, people who've had success with a product often will be good potential people to be an affiliate. But when you think about this student of hers, whose community is made up of people who want to learn how to make caramel apples or do other things similar to that, well, there's not a natural fit here. I mean, how in the world would she offer that as a bonus? I mean, what bonus would she come up with? She'd have to come up with something that's not kind of in her silo, not in her lane to be specific for the DCA um, launch. And so that's kind of an example of someone who, who wouldn't be a perfect fit. Another example is a woman named Melanie who was in Digital Course Academy and is in my community, and she successfully launched a gluten and dairy-free baking course. Again, though, when you think about it, her audience wants to learn how to bake gluten and dairy free. They are not looking to learn how to create an online course. And so for her, there's just not a natural fit there. So again, you can kind of just see how when you use these kind of tests, you can kind of get a sense pretty quickly of, you know, hey, can I come up with bonuses that are in my silo? And if I can't, that's probably a pretty good sign that I don't have the right fit between my audience and the other audience. And so what that means is for you to act as an affiliate, you're not going to be serving your audience and it's not going to be a win for your audience. And so that's kind of when you look at it, you see, ah, okay, now I get how this fits in and how this the idea of seeing if a bonus fits is a good way to test things, right? And so that's another way to look at it. Now, the last test that I want to talk about or way to think about whether it makes sense for you to be an affiliate is I want you to ask this question. Are you going to be willing to tell people not to buy? And this one is a bit counterintuitive. I think a lot of people are going to hear that and say, wait, That doesn't make sense to me. But actually, I think this is one of the most powerful tests. You should not promote anything, your product or anyone else's product, unless you will be willing to honestly tell people who aren't right for the product that they should not buy. That is kind of the ultimate test of whether you're coming from a place of service or a place of selfishness. If you would never tell someone not to buy, if you would always say, yes, you should buy this, it, it, it's a pretty good sign that you are probably in it for the money, not to serve your community. This is something I've learned from mentors repeatedly is that we have to actively tell certain people not to buy our products. I do this with my product. When people come and ask me questions, I will actively tell them if they're not right for it, not to buy, that that my product is not right for them. They should find someone who is right for them, et cetera. I've talked about how when people will come to me with legal stuff that has to do with the online space, but maybe they're very specific to kind of health coaching. There's another online lawyer who I know is a health coach and used to be in like, you know, when she was practicing law in a more traditional setting, was in the healthcare legal field. So I'm like, 
that woman is much more qualified to serve you than I am. So go talk to her. Don't buy my stuff. And so that's an example that if you have the heart of service, you're going to be willing to tell people not to buy. And that needs to apply to affiliate promotions as much as to your own promotions. And let me give you an example. Again, from this Digital Course Academy launch that I'm in the middle of right now, I'm currently running a quiz that helps people figure out whether they are ready to create an online course in their business. If you're interested, you can check it out by going to youronlinegenius.com forward slash course quiz. I created this thing consistent with, you know, my messaging, but also with what I know uh, Amy promotes that you need to have at least kind of the basics set up and you need to have some things in place before you do this. And so I am very happy to actively tell some people that they should not buy. And here's the reality. I'm telling the majority of people who've gone from my community who have gone through that quiz that they should not buy. And when I say the majority here, I am talking about the vast majority, something like 75% to 80% of my audience who've gone through the quiz have gotten a result saying, you're not ready, do this instead. And so when you think about that, a lot of people would be hesitant, wouldn't be willing to do that. A lot of people would say, no, no, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop even telling people to go through that quiz because it means that maybe they're not going to, you know, buy and then I'm not going to get an affiliate commission and all of that. Well, if that's your mindset, you're not out to serve your community and serving your community should be at the high, you know, the highest level of what you're doing. And so if you, you know, thinking through that example I just gave, if that makes you queasy and you're saying, Ooh, I don't know that I could do that. I don't, I don't, wouldn't want to do that. Then I don't think you're ready. I think you need to get to a point where you'd be comfortable doing that, comfortable actively telling people not to buy the product. Because once you get to that point, that's when you can be pretty darn confident that you're promoting for the right reasons. You're promoting because you want to serve, not because you want to make money. So again, that's kind of this third test. Are you willing to tell people not to buy? So kind of quickly going back over those tests, one of them, you know, the, the first one is that you should only promote something that you would promote for free and ideally that you have promoted for free. You should only promote something, you know, on a launch type of promotion where you can naturally come up with bonuses that are within your wheelhouse. Maybe they're products you already have or products you could clearly create that are really on brand with your brand, with your offerings that are going to be a natural complement to the product that you're promoting. And finally, you should only promote something if you'd be willing to tell people who aren't right for the product that they should not buy. So if you use those three tests, if you pass all three of them, great, you should definitely, you know, it's a good sign that you probably should promote the product and, or you could, I mean, you don't have to, I want to talk a little bit about just kind of setting parameters. You just have to be selective because you have to make sure that you, that you're not promoting things constantly. And depending on where you are, there may be multiple products that you feel strongly about. And so you're going to have to make some choices. Again, my view, I could probably come up with, you know, half a dozen online courses that I think are really good and that my audience could benefit from. I'm never going to promote a half a dozen courses. I'm just not going to do that because it's not, it, it doesn't feel genuine to me. It doesn't feel like I'm serving if that's what I'm doing. Now, I want to be clear. I may tell people that those courses are great and I think it would be a great fit for them, but I'm doing it without the affiliate. I'm not going to do an affiliate bonuses. I'm not going to do affiliate launches, et cetera. And so that's kind of an example of where I am. And I think you need to take that same approach. If you want to start doing affiliate promotions, start thinking about what are some products that you absolutely love and then whittle the list down and start with one or two. And maybe over time you grow, 
But I honestly think that the people who have the greatest success long-term are going to be the people who promote two, maybe three things actively. Now you can have things going in the background. You can do all that. That's not a problem. I'm not talking about like my Kartra where, you know, people, if they want to sign up or, you know, if I just want to have those kinds of things, but I'm talking about active launches because realistically you have to, to kind of, you know, keep your powder dry to have credibility. And also let's be honest, people didn't sign up for your list for you to constantly tell them about other people's products. Now doing it some is fine, but if all you're ever doing is telling them how great other people's products are and they should sign up, et cetera, you're going to kind of lose the connection that we want to build. And so you want to avoid that. So that's kind of it. Wrapping up again, I want to be clear. I think affiliate marketing can be great if you do it right. If you treat it as I want it to be a win, 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 where everybody wins then it is the right thing to do and you'll be in good shape. So just kind of run through these tests to make sure it's a good fit, to make sure that there is good alignment. And if so, happily move forward and you can be an affiliate for that product. So that's my take on affiliate marketing. Again, uh, if you want to kind of see how I'm doing it, the kinds of things I'm doing, you can join me in my free Facebook group uh, about exploring a digital course business where we're kind of, you know, the, this is the hub for where I'm promoting my or uh, my affiliate launch of Digital Course Academy. And you can join it by going to youronlinegenius.com forward slash exploring DCA. You'll see, as is typical with me, I'm giving away a ton of training. I'm giving a ton of information. And, and my goal is that people maybe join, maybe don't. I don't really care. Candidly, about half the people who are in the group are already DCA members. So I know I can't sell them and, and I'm still serving them because again, that's the way I view it. And my view is that that's kind of a good encapsulation of the way I view affiliate marketing, just like everything else. So if you'd like to see how I'm doing it, like to kind of join, go ahead and join me in youronlinegenius.com forward slash exploring DCA. And that's it for this week. I'll be back here next week for another episode of the Online Genius Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Online Genius Podcast. Make sure to tune in next week for more great tips, tricks, and strategies to help you build and protect your online genius.